Hello, my name is Laura Mosqueda, and I'm delighted that we can show you what the next phase of your training could look like. Tech School of Medicine, we pride ourselves on challenging paradigms and thinking outside of the box. The amount of exposure that we get as students at LA County and Keck and all these different sites is incredible. The training you get here is as hands-on as it could be. Good morning, Mr. Reed. Oh, do you have the CT scan? Yeah. Let's pull up that CT scan. So this is the CT scan from the first day. We take on the toughest challenges, the toughest cases. We take on the biggest questions for research to try and make a difference and improve human health. We are smack in the middle of it all, right here uh, in this health sciences campus. So we have a county hospital right across the street that has incredible, not only inpatient, but ambulatory facilities. Right across the street in the other direction, we have our Keck Hospital with wonderful ambulatory and outpatient surgery sorts of facilities. Then on my right, we have our Norris Comprehensive Cancer Hospital. And then just across the street, we have our major research buildings too. Research and education are really the foundations upon which everything else at the School of Medicine is, is founded on. You have multitudes of opportunities to do bench work, uh, clinical research, translational research, and really take your work from the bench side to the bedside. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm well, thanks. Good morning. This week, in fact, we've had a sickle cell patient, an aplastic anemia patient who came for treatment. We get uh, TTP patients. We have three to five autologous stem cell transplant patients on at any given time. I've been here 44 years, and there's two common foundational principles. Number one, patient interest supersedes self-interest. This is absolutely critical. Your levels are coming down, looking good. Um, so you're thinking discharge? Yeah, I think you can go home today. <laughs> the second is that this is a teaching center, and we talk about the very famous professors that are here to teach you. But the one thing everybody learns is that the master teachers are the patients themselves. And so, sir, we're going to show you what you actually had before and after. Okay. okay? This is what you came in with. <laughs> That's what you came in with. <laughs> Nearly locked out that entire lung, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You must have a passion. Part of your mission is to take care of the underserved. We are serving the underserved. We are serving those that are more socioeconomically advantaged. But essentially, you want to serve everyone and everybody and serve them the same, regardless of who they are. So who's our next patient? In here? Yeah. Okay. Yes. These are the patients that, you know, it's not just a pleasure to serve, it's an honor to serve. They're my people. It's, I see myself reflected in the, in the population. I really wanted to come back home in more ways than one. This could be my mom. This could be my dad. This could be my uncle. Um, and no other place could afford me that opportunity besides here. It's been a, the most challenging and rewarding thing I've done in my life, being here. Uh, I've been pushed in ways that I didn't think were possible. We're looking for that spark, that spark in a person that's going to become a good physician who's going to put the patient first. Can we get Dr. Dixon here, please? Can we get some backup? No matter how dramatic this scenario is, it's something that happens. The patient uh, just went non-responsive, her blood pressure dropped. We are pretty much in the ORs from day one. We do cases that other places um, just read about in textbooks. You really want to care for the caregiver. Um, our goal is to prevent burnout before it even happens. It takes about eight months till you start thinking, I can do this, I can master this. Do you see anything worrisome at all? Anything new? No, I don't. This is not a movie. This is for real. Can you show us two fingers? It's really important that not only do they listen to what the attending has to say, 
but equally important, the attending needs to listen to what the resident has to say. Show me where your pain is. We're here to learn. There's no dumb questions ever. We really want an inclusive environment where you can be the thought and the change leader on our campus. If you come to USC, you will be part of a close-knit, collaborative Trojan community. It's so important to know that you're part of the Trojan family. That's not just a catchphrase here, it's something that we really need. We care about the people who are here. We care about you after you leave. It's a lifelong commitment on our part. I'm Kasim Mirza. I'm a general surgery chief resident. I'm in my last year of training here at Keck USC and LA County Medical Center. We've got truly a great group of residents. Each and every one of them I'd be I'm happy and excited to be working with on a daily basis. So when we're rotating through the different services, when I, every name I see pop up, I say, oh great, I'm going to be working with this person, I'm going to be working with that person. So it's really, I think it's a, a great cohesive group. Um, credit the, the program with having, you know, really selected residents that are number one smart, great to work with, and team players. So it makes coming to work in long hours and taking care of patients that much easier. I'm Lauren Holly and I'm one of the fifth year general surgery residents. Here we have uh, one of our ORs. We have 25 ORs on this floor and all of them are set up with um, monitors and they're capable of minimally invasive surgery. Right over here we have our trauma elevator. It actually goes down to the resuscitation bay. We'll get called down to the ER, we assess the patient, we determine they need to go straight to the OR, and we bring them right up these elevators and into the OR right here. All right, so this is OR20, this is our main trauma OR. We have patients that'll come up straight from the trauma bay through up the elevators and in here, and we'll have the initial operation to stabilize the patient. From 6.30 in the morning until 7.30, the operating rooms are all being prepped, prepared for the cases that are going to be done that day. The rooms are already sterilized, they are going to be set up, and then at 7.30 is when patients will be rolling into the operating room. General surgery residency is, uh, we have seven categorical uh, residents each year, so that means that uh, out of five clinical years and a research year, we have around 42 plus or minus residents in our program at any given time. Um, and then there's also integrated residents, which are part of the integrated residencies for vascular surgery, plastic surgery, and CT surgery. Uh, and those residents are of they're slightly smaller programs, but we all work closely together. In a general surgery residency, we're, the goal is to get us trained to be independent surgeons, and it's a graduated uh, model of autonomy, whereas when you start out early in your training, you start to get the responsibility of taking care of patients on the floor, and throughout residency, I think you know, we do a great job of getting even junior residents into the operating room, and ultimately we're here to get training, the technical training and the patient care training to be able to practice independently. So we spend our time uh, rounding in the hospitals, taking care of existing patients that are in the hospital, seeing new consults uh, for surgical problems, and of course, operating, going to the operating room and um, doing both elective surgeries that are planned out and emergency surgeries. Uh, at Keck, it's a you know, large quaternary transfer center. We have both transfers of complex patients that come in from other hospitals that we'll take care of uh, and be able to coordinate care between the high-level consult uh, uh, medical teams as well as the different surgical specialties. And we also have all of the um, clinics here that will have patients seeing, seen through the clinics that we'll bring in if they have surgical problems that need an operation. And on the county side, obviously county is a, a large uh, trauma center as well. We do get a lot of experience uh, taking care of trauma patients and emergency patients. So the, the emergency room is that, that's the, the big open door where all these patients come in through. People come in seeking help for various problems or if they've had an injury or they're brought in by an ambulance. We'll go down, see them in the trauma bay, 
and then the care starts immediately. The thing that really makes this residency and the experience we get here great, we have a great balance of uh, of patients that we take care of. Uh, it can be planned surgeries for patients who have come in with a problem that needs to be taken care of. Every patient, doesn't matter where you come from, it doesn't matter your insurance status, it doesn't matter what sort of social barriers or economic problems you may have, you come into the county hospital emergency room and we're gonna take care of you and we're gonna take great care of you. And I really think that that's one of the strongest parts of our, our residency is that mix. And it's the patients that we treat sometimes at county, they really can be all walks of life, people in dire need of help, and we can uh, help them out and send them on their way and kind of contribute to the community in that way. The diversity of patients that we treat at county as well, it's the experience you'll get with, from a, even a cultural standpoint, knowing and learning from your patients how they approach their health and what you can do to adapt how you approach patients, uh, it's unparalleled here. You know, I've heard said before that you can train anybody to do surgery. It requires the, the dedication and the, um, the desire to really put the time into doing it. So that graduated autonomy, we start off, you know, starting in the operating room where you're working with attendings who are the experts in their field. And it's a, process of textbook, you know, reading about the procedure you're going to be doing, knowing the steps, knowing the pathophysiology and the disease process that's led to it, and then a uh, graduated process of getting to, have after having seen a step of a procedure or, or how a procedure is done, you'll be observed and walked through doing part of it by one of your uh, attendings or, or senior residents. And then uh, over time, as you progress through your training, you'll be responsible for uh, doing, uh, doing those, the critical steps of an operation. And then by the time you're finishing your training, the goal is to be at a point where you can really take yourself through that, that, uh, that operation surgery safely. We're lucky to have a great, um, great education curriculum, kind of in addition to what we learn on the wards and in the operating room. The Fresh Tissue Lab is, is a great um, resource for surgical residents and trainees where we can really be practicing steps of an operation and our technique in fresh tissue that's not been preserved. And there's, no, there's really no you know, replacement for that. You can use plastic surgical models, but the way tissue behaves and, and what you can expect when you're using certain instruments um, on tissue is there's no replacement for that fresh tissue lab. It's a great experience. There's also um, kind of cutting edge uh, perfused models where using cannulas to access to the veins and arteries, we can actually have fluid pumped through the body so that closest you can get to an animate model of training. We have a great balance of, of various models where we can use to, to train on doing procedures like placing central lines, placing chest tubes, doing emergency procedures like cricothyroidotomy, where you're having to establish an emergency airway for someone who has a blockage of their, of their airway. Uh, and those are procedures that, you know, as a surgeon, you hope to never have to do, but when the time comes and the uh, you know, everything's hitting the fan, you gotta be able to have gone through and trained and know how to do it. And those education models and the, the um, uh, skills labs are the perfect place to really get those skills under your belt. We did a, a training as, as junior residents on placement of uh, pigtail chest tubes. And that's something that, you know, you'll come across. This is a way of placing a, more, a smaller bore chest tube into the chest cavity to drain away fluid or to evacuate air that could be causing a problem. And after having gone through that training, I was asked to, uh, or I had a patient that needed that procedure done uh, within the, a number of weeks after that and was able to feel confident doing it. And you know, I had done one more be before that, but it was under supervision. And with that additional training, I was comfortable doing it uh, without any supervision, was able to fix that problem. One of the strongest points of our training program is just how balanced it is in terms of, number one, the environment where we're operating and training and the, the different uh, kind of practice patterns. So we spend time at Keck USC at LA County uh, Hospital. 
We also spent some time at a number of community hospitals, Good Samaritan Hospital, uh, just right next to downtown LA and Koreatown, and at Kaiser West LA. And that kind of rounds out our experience and gives us a exposure to um, community practice, as well as a lot of kind of bread and butter general surgery that's uh, you know, a great addition to the, sometimes not that we don't treat, you know, sometimes you're treating very complex patients over at those hospitals as well, um, but it's, uh, it can be more of a mix. So it's, uh, it's a great way to, of, of seeing that. And I can also say, coming out of this, this residency, I'm gonna be comfortable uh, practicing in an academic model, in a community model, and I feel like I've gotten the experience to really know what that looks like and what that will, um, what that will be is if, I, if I choose that as a career. I mean, you can't ask for a better place to be living when you've got uh, the sometimes limited hours outside the hospital during your residency and you're working 80 hours a week and when you do have time off, what better place to be than, than Los Angeles. This is now my sixth year here in Los Angeles and you know, it's if you fall in love with the city, it's a great, great place to live. There's endless possibilities for entertainment and leisure and you know, all the museums and learning opportunities. I got married right before residency and now have a daughter, so we have a great time you know, exploring all the different places we can go and not to mention food and you know, fun on the beach. And when you do have a few days off, you got one day off a week, it's nice to be able to count on some good weather, some sunshine, and you're not going to be stuck indoors because it's raining for the most part. Once you've done a residency or a fellowship here, you are ready for the next phase of your career. And that might be going into clinical practice, it might be going into academia, it might be going on for more training. Whatever it is, be assured that you are going to be the most well-prepared person possible for that next part of your career.